All right, Shalom, Shalom. Just making sure audio and everything is good. Audio and everything is good. All right. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakodash, double honors to my apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, the men that told me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that teach this word the truth and sincerity. And peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of Yasha Allah that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. That consists of the Israelites that look like other nations, other races, the believers, the helps, the friends of the prophets, and the list goes on. All right. The name of this show is We're Looking for a Miracle of Salvation. All right. We're Looking for a Miracle of Salvation. And this is in response to um apostle gabal because after camp you know we always you know have like a pep talk or you know a, a a faith booster you know talk about the current events what's new in israel and um you know stirring up our pure mind uh stirring up our spirits all right putting us in the pure remembrance of things of old and to keep the faith and one of the things that Apostle Gabal built on was we're looking for a miracle. You know, we're looking for a miracle. We're looking for our Lord and Savior, all right, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, which his real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. to come back and save us. All right. We're looking something beyond man's comprehension. We're looking for the scriptures to come to life. Everything that we read, everything that we go out there and teach through about the scriptures, through the scriptures, we want to see it come to life. And that's salvation, deliverance, and the Lord shielding us in these times of trouble. And that's what Apostle Gabal is um, building on. And, you know, he said it with like vigor and zeal. You know, we're looking for a miracle, man. We're looking for a miracle. We're looking for how the Lord helped the ancient, the, 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 our forefathers. He helped the righteous men of old. We're looking for that in these times, you know? And it's the spirit, because he just did a show. He just did a show on it. And um, this is land backing off of what he did. All right, so let's get into it. Hey, shalom to all the Akim on the comment board. Hey, peace and blessings to y'all brothers, man. You know? So now let's eat, let's eat. It's time to eat. Get this this living water, this daily bread, man. First and foremost, let me let me um see. Apostle Gabar just did a show on it. We should expect a miracle. Miracles. Now let's look up this word miracle. This is Google, of course. It says miracle. Miracle. A surprising and welcome event. That is not expectable, expectable by natural or scientific laws, and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. So this is what we're looking for, man. Remember, we're looking for something that's not seen, that's not heard of. Just like Noah, he prophesied that there's going to be water coming from the skies. And this was at a time period where it wasn't raining. There was no such thing as rain during the time period of Noah. But he told them, he told the people, because the Most High told Noah, he warned Noah what was going to come. Just like the Most High warned us what's going to come. So just like the Most High delivered Noah from the thing that wasn't happening on the planet Earth yet. The thing that... What does it say? Science, it says scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. So man couldn't understand what Noah was talking about because it didn't happen on the earth yet. Just like the people can't see or understand what we're talking about because there hasn't been a world's war since, you know, going back to what? Vietnam. There hasn't been a world's war since World War II and World War I. You had, like I said, the Vietnam War, 
And now all the wars that America wages is all domestic. The war on terror, the the war on drugs, the war on you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. But we're telling them that there's going to be a third world's war. We're telling them that they're going to shoot their nuclear missiles. And when all these things happen, the Lord is going to come back to get us. The Most High through his son is going to save his elect. That's what we're telling the people. But they can't see it. So they don't believe it. So now it says a surprising and welcome event that is not expect uh, except expectable all right by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of divine agency a highly improbable or extraordinary event and it's a development or accomplishment that brings very welcome uh, consequences an amazing product product of achievement or an outstanding example of something wonder marvel sensation phenomenon so these are the things the lord is going to do just like he did with our forefathers of old man all right now i just want to get this real fast what's that all right because we understand through the scriptures that the Lord controls life and death, right? We understand that the Lord delivers and he punishes, etc., etc. So let's kick it off with this. Um, let's see what I want to do first. All right, we're going to do it with this. This is Genesis. Chapter 18, verse 22. 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went to a Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So the Lord, so Abraham wanted to know, like, ah, you're going to bring destruction, but you're going to destroy it. You know, because his, his nephew Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. So he was like, you want to destroy the righteous as well? And then Abraham asked him, pre-adventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked? So Abraham wanted to know, are you just going to kill everybody? You know? All right, we know that the you know the wicked is doing this, that, and the third in moral acts, sexual deviant deviant acts. But are you going to destroy the righteous as well? And it says, and that be, and that he the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee shall not ju the judge of all the earth do right. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city. Then I will spare all the place from their sakes. So the Lord said, even though there's much wickedness going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, if there was 50 righteous people, I wouldn't destroy it. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Will not all destroy all the city for the lack of five? For he said, I f if I find there 40 and 5, I will not destroy it. And it goes on and on and on. And Abraham kept asking. And the Lord kept telling him, I will not destroy something for one for none of the righteous. The righteous will not be destroyed. Right? This is what the Most High kept telling Abraham. Right? So, verse 33, And the Lord went his way. Oh, Verse 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Preadventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. Right? This is Second Peter's chapter 2, verse 6. All 
I'm going to start from five. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So this is what you got to remind yourselves, brothers. You know, that's we pray and hope to be found worthy. We pray and hope for mercy. That's the right spirit to be in. But in the same breath, you got to believe that the Lord is going to deliver you. You have to trust and believe that the Lord has the power to, to, to work wonders. We're looking for the miracle. So it says, bring it in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turn in the cities of, in, of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with the overthrow. And making them an example unto those that all should. And making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So the Lord delivered just lot. He delivered them. Just lot represents the righteous. Just lot represents the elect. Because we around. Um. Spirit, we in spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah today, and we're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And then when you look up this word conversation, it's anastrophe, all right, which means conduct and manners of living. It says manner of life, conduct, behavior. So this is not light, wasn't just vexed with faggots talking, he was vexed how faggots was living, how homosexual and all type of immoral deviant sexual acts immoral living overall all right so it says and delivered just like vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them just like the elect are today and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. This is why we're pissed off. This is why we get furious and we get angry. Because we live amongst wickedness, man. We live amongst two-thirds of our people that don't know their God, don't know their nationality, don't know their customs and mannerisms and ways of life. We live under the oppression of our enemies, the so-called white man, which is Esau, Edom. Tribal wars. The northern kingdom banging on the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom banging on southern kingdom. Northern kingdom on northern kingdom. And then all the heathen nations is banging on us. Tearing us apart. Making sure that we in uh, low standards in this society and world. Alright. And it says. He says vex. It says vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Let's look up this word temptations. Because this is the miracle that we're looking for. This is the miracles that we're expecting. Alright. This is para samos. Para samos. There's different definitions, but we're looking for the definition that fit the context of the scripture. Okay, so right here, number four, adversity, affliction, trouble. So the Lord, the scriptures say, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of adversity, affliction, trouble. All right. Of the conditions of things. Or a mental state. Even brothers battling spirits and demons. Brothers catching the hell. You know. The Lord knows how to deliver you from those things. It says of temptations. Okay. Yep. Yep. The Lord knows how to deliver us out of these things. And ultimately the Lord is going to deliver us from the COVID-19. The Lord is going to deliver us from earthquakes. The Lord is going to the Lord is going to deliver us from earthquakes, pestilence, famines, and ultimately that second death. And that's going to be the miracle, man. 
That's what we're looking for. We're looking for, what's the definition? A miracle is an event not explic, ex, explic, uh, ex, ex, ex susceptible by natural or scientific laws. Something that the world can't comprehend. The world doesn't understand. Informally, the word miracle is often used to characterize any beneficial event that is statistically unlikely, but not contrary to the laws of nature. But it is going to be contrary to the laws of nature because it's going to be divine intervention. It's going to be something that this world uh, 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 can't understand. They know it, it, it is, 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 um, it's out of this world. I'm going to say it like that. Extraterrestrial. So it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. All right? That's the point on that. Oh, let me get another scripture. This is Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow upon the earth, nor on the sea, nor any, or any tree. So, remember, the scriptures say that the Lord had created spirits for vengeance. He has angels. Their job is to destroy, to kill, right? So these angels are holding the four winds, which represents the destruction. In particular, the second death, okay? That the wind, the destroying wind, that thermonuclear fire, should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Let's see why. Why is the Lord holding back this great wind of destruction which represents the thermonuclear fire verse 2 and i saw another angel ascended from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And that sealed is Thawa. Going back to Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. That's that seal. The exemption of judgment. Meaning, do not hurt these people. Let me put these to the side. I'll give you the analogy for all my analogy brothers out there. You got a pair of shoes that you don't want to get dirty. So guess what? You you fucking put those shoes in a special place in a box wrapped in plastic so it don't get dust on or it don't get dirty. Or you put your suit in, in a damn in a suit bag for the older brothers. You put your suit in that damn suit bag so it don't get dirty or or anything else like that. So the Lord is waiting for his elect to be sealed so he can so the angels can do their job and destroy Babylon the Great, the beast, all right, NATO and the EU, and all of the so-called white men, which is Esau, Edom, power structures, all right? So it says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads, all right? So this is the miracle, man. We're waiting for that miracle. The Lord said, we can't, the Lord said to the angels, they can't destroy the earth. Not literally the planet earth, but the power that rules over the earth. Do not destroy them yet until we have sealed the seal, which is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, knowing that they're Israelites. 
rehearsing the Lord's statutes and commandments and having faith in Yahweh and doing the works. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Going out there on the highways and byways. All right. Women being faithful to their husband. Paying tithes to the church. All right. And for the believers, you're being helps to the prophets. All right. Re-uploading a video, making new pages, re-uploading all the information that the Israelites are putting out there. You pushing the truth out, helping the prophets out, putting it on other platforms, and you paying your tights, sending your offerings, and you got to rehearse the righteous acts as well. If you're not out there doing the work, you still got to believe upon the Most High, call upon his name. You still got to fast. You still got to pray. You still got to read. You still got to keep the Lord's statute of commandments and the faith of Hamashiach and Abishah. You still got a job to do as well. All right. So next scripture. Uh, let's see. Psalm chapter 37 verse 37. Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Right? The end of that man is peace. Because he did the things that was pleasing unto the Lord. He did he lived a just life. Living a just life, meaning he kept he rehearsed the laws and the faith of the Lord. That's being just. Alright? And the end of that man is peace because the Lord promised if you keep meditate upon my Lord day and night. And you keep the faith, you're going to live a prosperous and successful life. According to the Most High, not according to this world. It says, but the transgressions shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. That's the promises of the wicked. That's who the judgment is for. The judgment is not for the, the righteous, but the judgment is for the wicked. These plagues is for the wicked. The plagues is for the heathens. All right. It says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, is of Yahweh. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is our strength in the time of trouble, man. So you got other camps out there, you know, they say, you know, what's your plan of action? What are you going to do when this happened or that happened or this happened? And our response here at Great Millstone, we're going to have faith. First and foremost, Yahweh Shah told us to take no thought for our life. <coughs> for tomorrow is going to take thought of itself. Let's get that real fast. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life where ye shall eat or which ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, which ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than more than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment, considering the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, this, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if the Most High so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much clothe you, O ye of living little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying what we shall eat, or what ye shall drink. What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. The miracle. So in the time of trouble, the time of fear, we're going to eat. That's the miracle we're looking for. When we out there on a run, 
if brothers are on the run. The Lord is going to clothe us. He's going to give us shelter. That's the miracle. We're trusting on what the Lord told us. We're banking on what the Lord promised us. We know that the Lord is a man of his word. We know that for a fact. Look at our people. It's a clear sign that the Lord is a man of his word. We're smitten with madness. We're going to Esau Edom for the one of all things. All of those curses in Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down happened onto us. So that shows you the Lord is a man of his word. So how much more his promises? How much more the, the, his promises of deliverance? His promise of eating during the time of famine? His promises of salvation? How much more of those? It says, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of, for the things of itself sufficient unto the day of evil thereof. So it says, but Psalm 37 verse 39, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Okay. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. That's the miracle, Akio. Salvation of the Lord, man. The thing that the world can't explain. Scientists, their professors, their scholars, they can't explain. They can't elaborate. They can't go into it, dissect it, experiment. They can't explain it, man. And the Lord gave that on to us, the Israelites. It wasn't given on to them. That's why we say, Kal Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Kal Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right, all right. Kal Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And the Lord says, shall, The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. This is the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 22. Now this is the story. I'm getting straight to the point. But this is the story when Paul got locked up. It says that the multitude rose up together. You Y'all brothers can go on early on in the chapter and read to get the whole context. I'm just getting the point. This is Acts chapter 16, verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes. And commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. So Paul and Silas was beaten for teaching the words of the Lord. They was persecuted for believing in, on the heavenly father and his son. All right. And it says, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. And it says, hold on. Hold on, hold on, I can one second. You you in my brother? Shalom, shalom. Hey, shalom, shalom. Yeah, how about you? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Brakata. Okay, I had to get you on, I had to hit the button. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind, kind. Is that echo still going on? It is. Can you hear me on the other side? Nah, I'm good on my side, but you got the I hear it. I hear it, but I'll deal with it. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is the yeah, book. Yeah, I'll do it. This is the book of Acts, chapter 16. All right. This is the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 23. And when they, when they had laid many stripes upon them, 
they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. It says, who, having reached such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. And it reads, and made, and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Most High. And the prisoners heard them. So Paul and Silas, they was locked up, right? They was in jail, showing you that righteous men, though though you know we're not um we're not saved yet. We're not saved yet. We still could be. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We still could be hit, beat, stabbed, whatever. But the Lord still has the power over life and death. The Lord still has the power over uh salvation and judgment okay but this was a testimony like the scriptures say in romans chapter 15 verse 4 the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning as a matter of fact let me just get it because everything is a testimony all right everything is a testimony of the lord's power this is romans 15 and 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we read the account of Paul getting locked up, Paul getting beaten, so we have comfort if it happens unto us. If we get persecuted for teaching the words of the Lord, we have comfort because we understood this happened before. All right, you get it? So it says, who having, okay. Verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Most High, and the prisoners heard them, all right? And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison was shaken, and immediately, all the doors was open, and everyone's band was loosed. So that shows you, man, the miracle that the Lord has in stores for his men. All Paul and Silas was doing was praising the Most High while they was in jail. They was praising the Most High, Yahweh Bashem. They was praising the Most High through his son because they was persecuted for teaching the words of the Lord. The things that Yahweh Shai told us was going to happen to us, they was praising the Lord for it. And what happened? A miracle. A miracle happened. Esau would say, it's a coincidence, but there's no such thing as coincidence. There's no such thing as accidents. Everything is orchestrated by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So it says, and suddenly there was an earthquake, a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands was loosed. So not only <laughs> they got loose from the chains, man, the shackles. All right. It could have been the shackles could have been bound to the wall that kept them still or whatever. And the earthquake made them loose, man. And it reads, And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing all the seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Because guess what's the punishment back then? If the prisoners got away, that's your ass. You would have had to pay for that. All right, so he was about to kill himself. Let's read. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, "Do thyself no harm, for we are all here." Then he called for a light and sprang in, and came trembling, and fed fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" So. He became a believer at that moment, man. He was like, yo, the Lord is with these men. Whoever, whoever, whatever God that they're talking about, he's real. He is real, man. And I got, yo, what I got to do to be saved? What I got to do to get that miracle? Because this is what we fighting for and hoping for and looking for. We're looking for that miracle, man. And they said, Believe on the Lord Yahusha Mashiach, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. 
So not only the Lord is going to protect you and shield you, he's going to shield your house, Lord's will, if you be found worthy. If that's the Father's will, that means your wife and your kids. All right? And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. So then he started preaching the word and Paul and Silas started teaching the whole family. All right. That was it on that. You got it. You got it, my brother. Come, bro. Hey. Yeah, heavy lesson, you know what I'm saying? Um, so like, is, uh, is the echo better? Nah. I still hear it. I still don't, hear don't worry. It. I'm going to get some headphones. You got it. All right. All cool, right cool, cool. Cool. I'm going to just, just turn, turn it down. down. I don't know. But yeah, but yeah bro, bro, you know, you know, like, you know, know you know, we, we got to miracles because, I, you know, I pulled up a few scriptures to back up the topic that you're getting into, you know, which is the spirit of Possible Bar. Said what he said yesterday. And he also did a show. I'm sure you probably got into this already, but I'm low will and I'm going to catch that video. Hold on. OK, yeah, my mic is my mic is still good. But anyway, yeah, low will and I'll catch the video of Possible Gabar did later on. But um, we got to expect miracles, man. Hold on. Is this my mic? Hey, you hey, hear me, still, brother? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. All right, all right, all right. Guys, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you ready? Let me, let me, um, um what scripture should I come, come on? on? Is the, the book, book of John, John. 21, <laughs> verse 20, verse 20 uh, I'll, start I'll start at 24. 24. It says, it says this, this is the, the disciples of these things. They wrote these things. And we, and we know, know that it's true. true. Verse, Verse 25. 25. And we are also so many, many other things, things which I did. I did. Which, which, if, if they should be written, written every one, one, I suppose that even the world, world cannot, cannot in the books, books that should be written. written. A month, you know, you know and, and how to learn expresses the name of the thing that our Lord said in this time. You know, there are endless miracles. You know, you know, they, they, they are everything that they have you know. So we, so we got to expect from Yahweh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my station, I also will be deep from the hour of temptation, which will come upon all the world of God, and the Lord of God, and the Lord of God. I am going to do this, I'm going to do this, you know, 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 you which is all which all the 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 you know, you know the before, before I get to that, let me um, get on. Let me get on. Verse 9 says, The Lord of God has delivered the body out of temptation and to, and to reserve, reserve the unjust 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 until the day of judgment to be punished. punished. All right, so, All right, so you have about to know exactly how to live a little bit. God, which is going to be the man of God, 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 the man of and how, and how he's, he's delivering, delivering like a drum. It's, it's got to be by a miracle, man. 
You know, you know, these same people have these days and age, man. So let me, uh, read up, read up, love, love. This is the second Peter Shackle. I started at six. Turning into the cities of Mora, into ashes, and then with the overthrow. Making them a dominant sample of those that have lived in the economy. All right, so, so I'm going to make more in the neighborhood of Detroit. Wicked, wicked deeps. All right, All right sodomy. sodomy. Beast beyond reality. All right, All right immorality. immorality. Okay, okay now, now America, which, 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 which is for your, your, the, the, the um, chief chief of the earth, right? right? They, did they did the exact, exact same thing with the more more with the 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 Next six for the building of the wicked. For that for righteous, righteous man will run them in seeing and, and, and hearing, hearing the righteous, righteous soul from the day to day, day with the Lord Jesus. And in, in this, this particular instance, we stand in the Lord. All right, just, right, just like, like how we're going to do this, that's not a more we can be destroyed. If I find a brimstone, having a brother to have one in the day, I died in that murder to be about to find a brimstone. You know? So, so then going to mind, it says, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. All right, that's much better, brother Thawada. You know? Oh, who is that we at? Um, that's uh, John 21, 2 Peter. And this right here is a miracle as well. This is the book of uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. All right, written in a Bible, written in a book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, where it talks about the 12,000 written, I mean, 12,000 from every tribe that's going to be delivered. All right, along with the rest of the one third. So this right here is a miracle within itself because Michael is the archangel. Michael, the top angel, is going to come with, his, with, with the chariots, with the, the holy host of heaven, all right, the rest of the angels, and they're going to perform those miracles because chariot sightings within itself is a miracle, man. All right, Esau understand, well, Esau don't understand the things that the chariots, the UFOs can do. To this day, it's unexplainable to how they maneuver in a way that they do. How they move at such speed against wind velocities, how they can submerge into the ocean without leaving a single splash, you know, how they could be at one point and just shoot up into the heavens just like that. Esau can't explain that. So that within itself is a miracle. So when all hell break loose in society, all right, the Heavenly Father is going to have to send his son and the angels to intervene, all right, to stop this, this damn devil, all right, from going too far, all right? That's why the scriptures also talk about in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 20, 24, 22, that um, except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. All right? Except them days are shortened, no flesh is going to be saved. So the Lord is going to intervene with this man and his plans. So I got, I got another example. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And I'll start at I start up above. Uh, I start at three and fourteen. It says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods? Matter of fact, let me put this on the screen. God. Let me put this on the screen. All right. 
Daniel chapter 3 verse 14 It says Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them And said unto them Is it true O Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Do not ye serve my gods Nor worship the golden image Which I have set up Alright Now what that what that sound like uh, The book of Revelation the third chapter Alright I mean the 13th chapter Around the 15th verse On down it says Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, um, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? All right, now, you know, this is, this is like an example of the hour of temptation to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. This is like their hour of temptation. All right? Now it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in, in this manner. It says, reading on Salakia, it says, if it be true, if it be so, our power, whom which we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king now what did these men have faith what is what is the definition of faith when you read the book of hebrews 11 they say faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so these men were uh another prime example of faith in a time of adversity all right in a time where, where we need deliverance at most you know so it says verse 18 but if not be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And that's the attitude we have towards Esau, his kingdom, all right, and ultimately his image, his new world order image, and ultimately that mark of the beast, which is a, a, an agreement that you vow to worship the, the beast and his image. All right, if you accept that mark of the beast, you are vowing to, you know, you selling your soul to the devil pretty much, like they say. Are right, you vowing to worship him? All right, and this is the time that's approaching the whole planet Earth, man. And this is what we've been waiting on, man, because without this happening, we won't have a kingdom to come. Okay? So it says, But if but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of which visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that's how these devils are going to be. They're going to, once we denounce them, denounce their chip, denounce their, their, their you know, their whole system, all right, denounce, even their, denounce their vaccines and their tests, so on and so forth, which everything is leading up to the mark of the beast, man. All right? They're going to be full of fury. It says, therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was, than it was wont to be heated. So they turned it up a whole notch. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. These men were bound in their coats, the hosen, their hats, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. All right, now here's when the miracle is about to take place. So it says... Therefore, because the king commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding, excuse me, in the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning furnace. So the men that, that, that bound them up, they ended up dying because of the fire. All right? That's how close they got, and that's, that's what happened to them. But Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, who was actually in the midst of the burning fire, Reading on, it says that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. So, hey, Yahweh Ba'ashimi Ha'ashai was with these men. All right. They weren't burnt. They weren't touched. They were walking around in the midst of the fire, untouched. All right? And Nebuchadnezzar was astonished at what he seen. You know? He seen, what he seen, what he witnessed was a miracle, man. 
Why? Because these men put their trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says that Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High Power, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king counselors being gathered together saw these men, upon whose body had the fire, had no power. All right? So the fire, the power of death had no power over these men. It says, nor was an hair of their heads sign, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed unto them. All right, so these men, you you would have not known that they they even stepped into a midst of a burning fire into a furnace. Man. All right, and these are the miracles that we expect, you know, to 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 be, you know, to through the spread of the Bashim Shemayim Shai and faith to be performed in these days coming. Because how else are we going to be saved from this damn devil, man? All right, get it on, Brock. Con Con, that's better now, brother. You way better, happened? brother. Dwater, way better. Okay, okay. This oh. is um one second. This is the book of Acts, chapter four, verse twelve. It reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, Israelite men, whereby we must be saved. All right, and that's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, because through those names we receive power. Through those names we receive the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures. Through those names we receive faith. Through those powers, we're going to receive this miracle, man. We're going to receive this miracle, which is salvation. It says. For there is none other name under heaven given among Israelite men whereby we must be saved. All right. And when you see the word saved, when you see the word salvation, that's in reference to the miracle. All right. For the brothers that are just getting on, I'm going to go back to the word miracle, the definition. It says. A surprising and welcome event that is not expectable. It, Ex expectable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency mm. this is what we're looking for man it says a a highly improbable or extraordinary event development or accomplishment that brings very welcome consequences all right so it's like like I brought out earlier with the example of Noah. Noah was telling the people something was going to happen on the earth that never happened before. Noah said it, water was going to come from the skies. And why did no one know that? Because the Heavenly Father revealed that onto Noah. Just like the Heavenly Father revealed onto us. All right? The mark of the beast is the RFID chip and not to take it. Though it's going to be famines and pestilence and plagues and wars going on on the planet Earth, the Lord is going to shield us from these things. All we have to do is rehearse the laws and keep the faith. Live according to how the Most High told us to live so we can receive these miracles, man. All right. And it starts with knowing the names of the Lord. All right. Uh, this is Titus chapter 3, verse 4. It says, But after th that, the kindness of in love of the Most High, our Savior, towards man appeared, which was Yahweh Shah, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. So the Lord is not going to save us based off of... um. You know, oh yeah, he was a hard working man. Now that doesn't that doesn't mean the Lord is a just man. He's gonna reward us for our works. But he's not saving the Lord is saving us solely based on we was his choice. We was his election. It had nothing to do with, you know, basically, basically you being righteous, more right what I ain't gonna say that because the Lord gave us the spirit to be righteous. All right. So I'm going to read the scripture. It says, not by the works of righteousness, which have, we have done, 
But according to his mercy, he saved us. That's the clarification. It's all because the Lord had mercy upon certain people, which are the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right. It's because of his mercy we were saved. All right. By the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Savior. All right. That being justified by his grace, so we are justified, we are saved, we're going to get the miracle, all right, by his mercy. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, that was it on that. Uh, all right, here you go. Matthew chapter 16, verse 14. It says, after what he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Because you had people that seen Yahweh, but the, the 11 disciples didn't believe it because they just seen him die. All right. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto, to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So the miracles are going to come to the ones that have received the word, believed it, and lived it. All right? It says, and but he that believeth not shall be damned. So then you're not going to see, receive salvation. They're not going to receive the mercies and um, the mercies of the Lord. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, meaning other languages. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's why we didn't die yet. All the GMO, genetically modified organisms that we eat, the artificial foods, the artificial water, everything that the, the, the so-called white man tampered with, messed with, poisoned we didn't die from it because of the tender mercies of the lord all right it says they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after the lord had spoken on to them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of the most high and they went forth preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the words with the signs following them. Amen. Um, now, I want to get an example how the Lord delivers. Because he has the power to curse and he has the power to bless. Just like we know, the scriptures say the issues of death belong unto the Lord. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. This is Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet of the son of Amos came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall, which is Jerusalem, and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Yahweh, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying. Go and say to Hezekiah. Thus saith the Lord. The most high of David thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold I will add unto thy days 15 years. See so the most high. Through Isaiah told him he Hezekiah was going to die. But Hezekiah repented. He seeked after the Lord. And the Lord had mercy on him and granted him 15 more years. Showing you the most high is the author of miracles, man. He does things that's beyond the comprehension of man. And this is what we're looking for. Salvation. 
from the hands of our enemy, the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. We're looking to make it through the times of famine. We're looking through. We're looking for the Lord to deliver us from pestilence, the biological warfare. We're looking for the Lord to deliver us from war. We're looking for the Lord to deliver us from the second death, which is the thermonuclear fire. So I'm going to read on. He said, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add on to thy days 15 years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this, this city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, that the Lord will do this thing that he have spoken. And that was it on that. You got it, Gabal. Go on, I got a couple a couple scriptures, uh, Lord willing. <clears throat> this is um the book of Hebrews. Since I, I mentioned it earlier, I'll jump to verse 6. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right. So that alone, you know, in itself tells you that, for one, it's impossible to please the most high without faith because everything we do is faith driven. Going out there in the highways and byways is faith driven. Why else are we doing it, man? All right. We preaching for a kingdom to come, a kingdom that we that we haven't seen, you know, but we know through faith that, that this kingdom is 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 true because our power told it to us all right so it say for he that cometh to the most high must do you how about you i must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and part of the rewards is going to be deliverance okay that's that's one of the major uh, rewards that the heavenly father is going to grant is elect now it, it, verse 7 says by faith noah being warned of the most high of the things not as yet seen Move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. And we all, all of us brothers, you know, in, through, you know, through faith and sincerity and truth, we fall in this step too. Just like I mentioned a lot earlier. Now, this one is talking about Noah, because we are being warned or we were warned of Yahweh Hashem Shai of things that are not yet seen, such as ICBM, nuclear, thermonuclear destruction. World has never seen it. All right. The scriptures talk about a, a second woe and a third woe. Now we believe unto the saving of our souls. That's why we do what we do. Besides us being reasonable, uh, reasonable servants. This is our this is our duty. All right. We doing this because we fear the most high, man. And we pray and hope for salvation when that time comes. All right. The scriptures talk about faith without works being dead. You know, you gotta have faith and you gotta have works. Okay, so Noah, be, you know, being moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Now, what we're doing right now individually is spiritually preparing our ark for ourselves. All right. That's that's really what we're doing in a nutshell, man. We preparing the ark for ourselves, man. That's why the scriptures say in um Philippians 2 and 12 to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. So what we're doing is is an individual thing, man. You know, yeah, we we get we get up with brothers, we link up because that's the body. You know, scriptures talk about brotherly love, charity, and and everything. You know, the whole the whole nine. But you gotta prepare an ark for yourself, man, in your house by faith. You know, and by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Okay. Now, what we doing also is condemning the world. That's why Esau is about to come down with great wrath. Esau know that the miracle of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha exists, man. Esau seen them chariots. He see those so called UFOs. Okay, he see those things, man. You know, matter of fact, he see he he see it more than we see it. You know, because Esau got them telescopes that 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 um scope out the outer space. He got them satellites up there. You know, this information that they just declassified that's old news, man. That's old news to us. They've been new about these things, man. But they know that the time is coming where Daniel twelve and one is gonna have to happen. All right, certain miracles are gonna take place. They know that. You know what I'm saying? And, but we believe that through faith, and we know it because of you know the things that are written the four times written for our learning, you know. So we believe that Yahweh Bashim is going to bring forth miracles, man. You know, it's just a matter of how it's going to happen. That's not for us to even think about. We just know that it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? We just know it's going to happen. Okay. No thought. 
That's right, bro. You know, <laughs> to take no thought. You know what you're gonna say because the Lord will put put the spirit on you to say things that you never said while you was teaching. You know what I'm saying? And, and just like that, you know, the Lord will put the spirit on these these devils to let you go. That's a miracle, man. That's a miracle. Hey, man, this thing can happen anyhow, bro. It's just, hey, it's some real exciting times ahead of us, man. You know, some real exciting times ahead of us. You know, just, hey, stay put. You know, stay in the work. All right? I got a couple more real quick. Right, let me see. Um, This is the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 25. It says, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. And they were astonished out of measure saying among themselves, who can be saved? And Yahweh shall look upon them, saying, with men, it is impossible. But with the Most High, excuse me, but not with the Most High, for with Yahweh Bashem Shai, all things are possible. All right, so the point is, with Yahweh Bashem Shai, all things are possible. And all it takes is belief. This is on the book of Jeremiah 32 and verse 26. Then came the word of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahshua, to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And the answer is no. All right. The Heavenly Father, he created everything as we know it. Hell, the, um, the creation of the universe is a miracle, man. The way, you know, he's, that's, that's, that's hey, pff, the damn devil, man. You saw, always got to bring in a scientific explanation because he's in denial about the miracles of the Heavenly Father. You know? He got to put signs behind how the earth, how everything was created. All right. Th that's the heavenly father's work, man. And to us is a miracle. You know, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 139. And I'll start at um, verse 13. It says. It says, for thou has possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. All right, mean the Lord what protects his protects his men. All right. That's why in Jeremiah, it tells you that. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, you know, I ordained thee to be a prophet. Verse 14 says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. All right, so marvelous are the works of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Now, let me go to another precept real quick, the book of... Which these are the scriptures that's going to come out a lot. Book of Revelation, the second chapter, third chapter, 20th chapter. You know? Hey, expecting a miracle is faith. All right? For the simple fact that you expect the Heavenly Father to deliver you, you know, that, that's the tall tale sign of your faith when you put in that situation between life and death. But still believing on the Lord, that's faith. And that's what the child by Shemel Shai wants. All right? That's why the scriptures say Hebrews 11. Six without faith is impossible to please him. But um, let me go to Revelation two and ten. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. All right, because the time of great suffering is at hand. The time of Jacob's trouble is at hand. It says, "Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison." Can I say now, something, brother Salak? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, bro. So the Lord basically already geared our minds up. That we're gonna suffer. You you already geared your mind up letting you know, like, listen, shit is gonna happen, but you're gonna be good. You're gonna be I right. I got exactly. you. Exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? It's Absolutely. gonna it's gonna hurt. It's going you're going to hurt. Expect hurt, but you're gonna be good. Mm -hmm. That's it, bro. You know, that's that's what clicked on my mind when you read that. That's right, that's right. Yo, you're going to hurt, but it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Your flesh is going to hurt. Your flesh is going to suffer. Don't worry about that because after that, go ahead. That's right, brother. That's right. Absolutely, man. That's that's the main that's the main point of the scriptures, man. The scriptures say, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, because the Lord know that we're flesh. The Lord know for sure that we're about to suffer some things because he's gonna put us through some things, man. You know? <laughs> hey, bro, that's why we that's why we do what we do through the spirit, man. What we doing, man. We're, we're practicing. Really, we're, we're practicing, bro. We're practicing for the times to come. All right? We're practicing. We're, we're, we're you know, through the spirit of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahshua, we're preparing ourselves. Um, the scriptures say in Isaiah 33 and 6, one of my favorite scriptures, man. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You know what I'm saying? Wisdom and knowledge. That's how it's going to 
that's how we're gonna be stable because you saw talk every day something new in the news. Now you saw talking about um when they black come extremists. around makes yeah, I seen that too. The black extremists, which they been had us on that that FBI list, the FBI chart, but now they coming out with it. You know, and that goes to show that we the main targets. We the main I believe we the main targets behind all of this. All right, because we are a major threat to Esau and his new world order. All right, so Esau cannot have his new world order flourish and have people like us on the streets, man. Have people like us, period. Matter of fact, you know what? I was watching um, I was watching Demolition Man last night for the first time. You know, what I'm saying I was supposed to been watch that joint years ago, okay. but it's but it's fire. It's fire now, even more than I probably would have seen it last year. Because if you go back and watch it, you're gonna notice some things that apply even more today, 2020, than it did 2019. Right. For example, um, when when they was greeting each other, they was they was giving each other high fives, but they was doing it like this, you know, social distancing. They weren't touching each other, you know. Another thing, um, the dude, the 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 the, the top nigga, the Illuminati guy that was that made the New World Order for that for that for that um law, L.A. He had a speech, he had a conference, and he was there, but then everybody else was sitting uh, behind computer screens. So that's what they're doing now. You know, schools, press conferences, and certain things, they eliminating, man, yo, man, I tell you, you saw his predicted programming, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, and to mention, you had the people that were on the ground. You know, those, they were a threat to that guy's, his new world order. They were a threat to it. And he wanted to kill the main guy who was, like, the leader of all of them. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, brother, there's nothing new, man. And what was the, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, make your point. No, no, I'm saying, uh, I forgot, brother. Go ahead. It's a lock, yeah, man. It's a lock. It's all right, bro. It's all right. Equilibrium was the same thing. Equilibrium was the same thing. They wanted to give every. Oh, you didn't see it? Nah, not yet, but I'm going to watch it. You can talk about it. Talk about it. Nah, it it ain't spoiling nothing, but it was the same thing. They had law and order, martial law up above. They was giving everybody pills to keep them uh, docile. docile. Mm. They was giving people pills to keep them docile so they wouldn't have feelings, emotions, mm. or thoughts. Mm. While you had the rebellion, they was reading books. They was yeah, thinking yeah. for themselves. Right, that's right, it. Right, right. That's it. Right, right. <laughs> hey, that's a good movie, man. I'm going to watch Equilibrium, but... Um, Equilibrium, check that I'm gonna out. Watch it. I'm going to watch it. But that um that Demolition Man was on point, man. <laughs> hey, and, and I'm, one more spoiler, I guess, if it's a spoiler. But, you know, when, when they when they um had, had, had froze... Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes in 96, and then it was released in, in 2032. They um they was off the grid. They they couldn't be traced because they didn't have the chip. The chip. And they, and they showed you. They, they they came straight out and said they weren't coded because in 96, they didn't have the um the coding system. You know Look what I'm saying? That. Look at that. that. That was a bad fucking movie, bro. That yeah. shit was bad as hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But, um... Let me go back to this right here. Revelation 2 and 9. 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Now, to the original point I was going to make is that these devils is trying to go around and forcing, vac- uh, forcing um, testing. Now, they're saying that if you don't want to get tested, you're going to have to stay in your house and get quarantined. All right? Or if you, if you get tested positive... And you quarantine, and they gotta quarantine you. You gotta have more than one bathrooms in the house per household member. Now, who in the hell have fucking five bathrooms in their house? Nobody. So, what does that tell you that every that if you got it, you gotta be quarantined outside of your home? All right, they're not gonna put you in no damn hotel. They are gonna put you in a damn camp. All right. So, hey, it might it might it might pop off just like that. You know what I'm saying? Brothers might they you know they want they want to come and force you to take the thing, take the test. You don't take it. Now you got to stay in your house for 10 days. You know, they may, they may just come and fucking grab you and put you in a concentration camp for 14 days because that's the, um, the, the, I guess the, what the life expectancy of the virus. If, if you got it, I don't fucking know some shit like that, but they're saying you got to quarantine for, for two weeks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this virus is the, is the escape is the major scapegoat for this whole thing to pop off, man. And, and he saw his damn devil diligent with his wickedness, bro. You know, but they, the heavenly father, <laughs> Hey, the ill thing about it, though, this is the Heavenly Father putting in him to do it. So how much more will the Heavenly Father deliver you from the man that who he set up to do certain shit, man? Right. You know right. what I'm saying? That's what I, that's the point I bring out through the Spirit, brother. The Lord promised all this mayhem, destruction, 
He promised the curses was going to be upon us. How much more the promises of mercy and salvation? That's right. How, how much the more the promises of deliverance, protection? You're going to eat and they're going to be starved. Woe unto them that laugh now because they shall mm -hmm. mourn and weep. Woe That's unto right. them that are full. You know, how much more those promises the Lord promised his men? That's right. That's right. That's right, bro. Yeah, that's right, man. You know? The miracles. Mm hmm The miracles, brother. And that, that was a bad definition because before I came on to came on with you, I was like, I was like, let me look up miracles, man. And that's exactly what it is, bro. You know, divine intervention or you know, uh, hey, the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And it's gonna happen. Hey, Lord will I'm gonna get a probably a scripture or two on spiritual powers because that itself is a miracle, man. That alone right there is a hell of a miracle. But um, this is all. Let me finish Revelation two and ten. Um, it says, "And you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death." Well, it means be faithful, even if they, if it, even if it means they gotta kill you. All right, even if it means they gotta kill you, don't take the chip. All right, even if it means they gotta kill you, remain and have faith. Okay, it says, "And I will give thee a crown of life," and that's something I'm telling myself because I'm in this for me. You know, as well as, of course, feeding the lambs of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but hey, I pray the Lord be with me, man. You know what I'm saying? As well as all you brothers. But the Lord said he's going to give his men a crown of life. A crown of life. Remember, Ezra, Ezra seen in a vision a young man crowning, a young man of great stature ground, crowning those men, man. Yo, hey, brother. Bro. Hey, man. Apostle made an ill statement the other day, too, man. He said, you know, you know how, how we always talk about the elect. He believed the elect is going to get beamed up in one ship. Well, hell, Yahweh Shah may crown you in that one ship, man. You know what I'm saying? As you, as brothers come up there, man. Hey, Lord willing, brother. However he have it. Yeah, however he have it, man. And he, he said he want, I don't know. He, I think he said, I don't know what shot, but I want to be, I want to be Yahweh Shah's ship, man. When he said like that, like, word, bro. You know what I'm saying? I do too, man. Lord willing. <laughs> and the Lord crown you in that new body, brother. Because we ain't take this fucking devil's chip or bow down to his image, brother. Man, that, that's all we got to live for, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Right. Yup. So, the Lord said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. And what's the second death? The ICBM missiles, man. You know what I'm saying? The ICBM missiles, because there will be a World War Three. The elites know that. They got their bunkers. They got their space pro. What do you think they got their space program set up for, man? So that when shit, when them, when it buzzes, is pressed, them fuckers is up there. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. The Lord said we ain't gonna taste of that second death. That's a reward because niggas that take the chip, they gonna die anyway. Whether Esau gonna kill you, the Most High gonna fucking kill you. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. That's why yeah. the saying. That's why that saying goes. You re, you you might as well die for doing what's right. That's right, man. You're going to die anyway. You might as well <laughs> die standing up for something that's right, which is the oh, Lord. God. That's right. That's right. You, you try to die to save your own ass. You know, that's why you took the chip. That's why That's why the scriptures say, he that seeketh his life shall lose about, it. Yeah, I'm about to get that for you right now. He that seeketh his life shall lose it. The reason why they're going to take the chip, because you want to protect your kids. You, you, you don't want your kids to get kidnapped. You want to be able to find your kids. The reason you taking the chip because your woman is nagging you to death, saying they starving and things like that. The reason you taking the chip is to save your ass. The reason why you selling out to the so-called white man is to save your ass. Right? But then That's the right. Lord is going to destroy you for trusting in the so-called white man, for trusting for trying to save your own ass. And the way the most high is going to kill yeah. you is going to be far worse, far yeah. more painful than you starving, than your woman nagging you, than your kids crying, whatever it is. Every brother, every man's situation is going to be different. But the reason you seeking to save your life is the same reason why the Lord is going to destroy you. The reason why we forsaken our lives and trust in the Lord is Lord's will, the same reason the Lord is going to save us. Mm, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's was right. it more revelations or you want to get the precept? No, nah, that was it in Revelation. I got on, um, you know, you said that. This is Matthew chapter 16, verse 
Verse 24 says, Then Yahweh Shai said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will lose his life shall, excuse me, yeah, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. You know, deny yourself, man. Fuck Esau, fuck his chip, fuck living in this society. You know, if I can't eat, then so be it. You know, deny yourself and take up your cross because that's the burden we all going to have to be faced with when that, you know, real soon. You know, and hey, bro, as, as the time go by, man, brothers is feeling it, that 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 that, that so-called, that feeling, man, that this shit is, is approaching fucking fast. And hey, bro, I can tell you how about Shemiah Shai because we need to get this thing over with, man. It says, for whosoever will save his life, which if you take the chip, in your mind, you're saving your life. Right. You know, in your mind... You know, oh, I'm sorry, you know, you're scared. You know, that's because you don't have faith. Right. It's really what it is, because you don't have faith that the Most High is going to perform His miracle and save you. Right. Going back to the topic, you know what I'm saying? But if you if you if, if you know that the Most High, if you know you're within yourself with faith that the Heavenly Father will perform miracles, you're gonna fucking say, "Hey, fuck you, Esau. Take your chip and shove it up your ass." And that syringe with it. All right. And at the end of the day, the elect ain't gonna, ain't gonna take the chip, man. The Lord got got His elect preserved. All right. You know, so it says, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So if you denounce the chip, all right, Revelation 20 in the fourth chapter, uh, 20th chapter in the fourth verse says, um, John seen the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness, the witness and the testimony of Yahweh Shah, right? He's seeing them men. All right, so them men are going to find their life. Okay, the brothers that deny this system, you know, and wait, wait for the miracles of Yahweh Bashim Shai, which is the deliverance, are going to find their life. When all life is lost in this society, because America is going to be destroyed, all right? And these people, these two, two thirds are going to get killed too, because you got two thirds throughout the four corners of the earth that's not going to see a missile. They're going to have to get put to death too, all right? One way or another. All right, so let me finish this up. It says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know, take you take the chip. You're taking the chip, the RFID microchip. A lot of people are going to take it. Hey, brother, another thing too, man. This whole UBI thing is a universal basic income. Is is literally gearing people up to get used used to and dependent on Esau, man. Esau got these niggas comfortable in their bed. Niggas like, yeah, I'm in my bed and I'm making money. Nigga, Esau taking away your freedom, nigga. And that's what this coronavirus thing was all about—to take away your freedom. All right, to have you dependent on this government, which brought anybody that's anybody that's collecting that that un extra um benefit of unemployment, which they just extended to January thirty first. If you collecting that, if you're gonna get another twelve hundred dollars, all these are forms of a universal basic income, which they're not saying it is, but they gotta have stepping stages, man. All right, these are like trial runs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why. That's why. See, the the people is getting domesticated. You're being turned into a pet. You're being Cunt. turned into a pet. That's why Esau is out there fighting tooth and nail exactly. to open the economy, to do this. Because exactly. they don't want the government. I don't give it, they don't give a shit about twelve hundred dollars. They don't give exactly. a shit about the, the extra five, six hundred dollars in unemployment. They mm -hmm. can make they can make their own bread. Mm -hmm. That's why they fighting tooth and nail, like yo, open the economy back mm -hmm. versus niggas. Give me the money, free money, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. You know, <laughs> they don't sure. know, man. Man. I, now, at the same time, I ain't going to complain about free fucking money, but you got to see the bigger picture. Yeah, it's different for us, brother. It's different right. for us. Because, our, our eyes is know? open. Yeah. yeah, yeah, brother. And and hey, hey, this is this is a, this is Esau's supplement until shit really hit the fan. So, well, fuck it. What else we need besides food, bro? What's the scripture say, boy? Matthew's the, uh, the 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 sixth chapter, the ninth verse, the prayer, the Lord's prayer. Give us our daily bread. You know what I'm saying? But niggas talking about, yeah, I'm gonna stack all this money. I'm gonna stack all that money they're giving us, and then what? <laughs> when the dollar crash, nigga. Exactly. <laughs> all them hundreds they hold to their ear don't mean a motherfucking thing. But toilet paper, <laughs> toilet paper is gonna have more value than your 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 money phones. Yeah, that's right, brother. Absolutely, because you can't wait. Wipe your ass with fucking money and shit gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like the brother Shield of Faith said, inflation to hyperinflation to collapse the dollar. And that's what is that's really what it's about, man. Hey, he saw he's through the how about I'm gonna say how about Shimon Shah is doing so many things. 
you know, killing so many birds in one stone, so to speak, using Esau to do it. Because here it is, he's dishing out all this money, which is going to fuck jobs up because nobody's going to go back to work. I, I, they, I, We know people that, that refuse to go back to work because they're getting bread anyway. You know, why go to work and get paid the same shit you're getting or more to sleep? <laughs> Stay home and do nothing. Binge watch on Netflix, right? <laughs> so Esau is going to get people dependent on that government. You know what I'm saying? And then at the same time, printing all this money, man. All this money. You know, to do what? Come on, man. Hyper inflation, man. The next thing is going to be the dollar is going to crash, which it was going to been crash anyway. But the reason for it is going to say coronavirus crashed the dollar. The coronavirus crashed the economy. So, hey, the coronavirus is a scapegoat, man. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, let me finish this up and you got it, bro. Matthew 16, 26. For what is a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, all right, which is the ultimate miracle, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when Yahweh shall come back with them angels, he's going to deliver his elect from any situation that the elect is going to be in. And that's going to be a miracle within itself. It says, and that he shall reward every man according to his works, whether it be good or bad. And it says, verily I say unto you, this shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, with all the things that are about to come down, you know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to preserve certain men from death, preserve certain men from going through certain shit. Some men may not ever get, may not ever see a concentration camp. You know what I'm saying? And that's all the Lord delivering you, man. We got to understand that everything that's that, that's happening, you know, is it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Because another scripture, Psalms 34 and 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. All right? So that alone, you we got angels protecting us, man. You know, we hey, we we probably go we we probably going through miracles that we don't even know about. You know what I'm saying? Might have might have might have made a might have kept going straight rather than making that right turn and ended up in a fucking crazy car accident or something like that. That's Those right. are miracles, man. You Can't know, bro. Can't find your keys. Yeah, yeah, brother. Can't find <laughs> your keys traveling. Get detoured. Get delayed. Mm -hmm. Those are all miracles. You don't know what the Lord prevented. From yeah. happening. That's right, bro. Hey, hey the, the the list can go endless, man. The list can go endless, bro. You know? But that, that's, that's all I, I got to say. I, if you know, if you want to, you know, get yeah, your yeah. precept. I got a last couple to wrap it up with. Um, I'm going to read the definition again because it was powerful. Huh. It does. What does miracle mean? An event that appears in explicable by the laws of nature and so is held to be supernatural in origin or an act of God one that excites admiring awe a wonderful or amazing event act person or thing all right wonder that's a synonym so this is we we hoping for this we're looking for this because you got other groups they'll sit there and say well what's your plan in action What's Great Millstone plan of action if this happened or that happened? <laughs> if it's martial law, or it's famine, <laughs> what's your plan of action? We was actually ridiculed for not having a so-called plan of action. But mm -hmm. Great Millstone answer is faith. Our plan of action is having faith in the Lord to do what he has to do. You know, it's nothing wrong with having water. It's nothing wrong with having food. It's nothing wrong with having shelter. But our trust isn't in those things because at any given moment, you don't know what the Lord has in store for you. What if tribulation arises at your house? All that food and water that you stocked up means nothing. And for the ones that have guns, what if you have guns and you run out of ammunition? It means nothing. It means nothing. What you put your trust in means nothing compared to what the Lord has in store. You don't know what the Lord got in store for you. That's why we solely put our trust into the Lord. And the scriptures told us, Yahweh Shah taught us to take no thought for our lives. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's our trust. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha. Chapter 5, verse 1. 
It says, set not thy heart upon thy goods. And say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. And say not, who shall control me for my works? Basically, don't be in that believing yourself. We believe in the Lord. Set not thy heart on thy goods. Your crib, your food, your water, your whatever, your belongings. All right? We're talking about in a time of trouble. Who shall control me for my works? For the Lord shall surely revenge thy pride. The Lord is going to take you for your pride, thinking that you're good in your circumstances. Say not, I have sinned. That's why the scriptures say that we will post always give glory unto the Lord, whether good or bad, whatever our circumstances are. So for the Lord is long suffering. He will no wise let thee go. Concerning propiti wait, propitiation, be not without fear and it sin unto sin and say not, his mercy is great. He will pacify, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation resteth upon sinners. Here's the point. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly the wrath for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security mm. thou shalt be destroyed. And perish in the day of vengeance. Mm. So we're not supposed to put off looking for the Lord day to day. We're supposed to be daily sighing and crying. We're supposed to be daily praying. The scriptures tell us to pray without cease. The parable of the prayer, Luke uh, chapter seven. I mean, verse eight, uh, chapter eighteen, verse one on down, told us about the unjust judge. And the woman that cried uh, daily. We're supposed to pray without cease. We're supposed to be looking for these miracles. All right. It says, for suddenly shall the Lord wrath come. For, the, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come. The famine, the pestilence. The martial law. And ultimately, the second death, which is the thermonuclear fire. And it says, in thy security, your doomsday prepping, you stacking up on food and water, you you stacking up, you you got bunkers, you stacking up on ammunition, which none of that is of the Lord. The Lord told us to solely put his trust in him. It says, in, in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed. Whatever you think is going to keep you safe, the Lord is going to destroy you for that. All right, last one. This is Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, in the Apocrypha, chapter 2, verse 6. It says, believe in him. It says, believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way of right and trust in him. So the scriptures tell us to believe upon the Lord, and he will help us. He will help us when we're in danger. He will help us when we're going through our tribulation. Order thy way of right, keeping the Lord's statutes and commandments and the faith of Hamashiach Yahushua, and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. So don't turn towards the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. Don't turn on to the vaccines, the vaccinations. Don't turn on to whatever the government says they're going to do to help you. Once again, they're trying to make it seem like their way is right. Their way is safe. Their way is to protect you. But we know that you can't trust your enemies like the scriptures tell us not to. Uh, the, the scriptures warn us to do. Never trust your enemy. All right? It says, ye that fear the Lord, believe in him. It says, ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. The, the, the proof is in the pudding, man. The scriptures tell us what to do in these times. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, 
and for everlasting joy and mercy. Here goes the point. Look at the generations of old. The, the brother just pulled out the, he, he started off with the scriptures in there you with um, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they was tried and they was proven to be worthy because they still trusted in the Lord, though they was about to be put to death. It says, look at the generations of old, all the righteous men of old, all our forefathers that served the Lord, our ancestors, and see did any, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. That's it, man. That's it, man. The scriptures, the proof is in the pudding. The scriptures let us know to trust in him, have faith in him, and he's gonna he's gonna give us the miracles. He's gonna he's gonna perform his miracles before our eyes. And we're gonna glorify Yahweh by Shem Yahushah of his power and his might and his mercy and his forgiveness and his salvation. That's it. Any closing words, brother? Nah, man. Till next time, brother. You know, brothers out there, I can that tuned in to water. Hey, just maintain your faith and your integrity, bro. You know what I'm saying? We at the end of this shit, and we ain't come this far just to get this far, you know? So, low willing brothers was edified, man. Con, con, the water for the comments and the precepts, brothers. Con. You know, do y'all comments, do y'all responses, build on, man. You know? Keep, 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 keep the fight, man. Keep the faith. Until next time, we're going to give all praises out and glory to Yahweh. Barashim, Yahweh, Barashim, Barashim, Until next time, we say Shalom. Shalom. We pray and hope that you was edified, man. Shalom.